Amen. Let us read these in unison. Psalms 100 verse, verses 1 to 5. Please begin. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth generations. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord, for this opportunity that we can pray. As well, Lord, God, as we can uh, have fellowship through your word. I pray that you will uh, help us and give us, Lord, God, the joy continually to serve you, to listen to your word. I pray that this message, Lord, God, will continue to challenge us and will build us, Lord, God, spiritually. Please help me as I preach. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Paul. Please be seated. Now, somebody said that the heart, the heart of a problem is the problem of the heart. Actually, this is a song, and it is a great message. But you know what? If you will allow to, uh, if you will give your heart to the Lord God, and allow the Holy Spirit to work or terrain in your hearts, that heart can be corrected. Nothing is impossible with God. And everything can be worked out by His grace. Now, in this uh, verses that we've read, this is a very familiar verses. And uh, most of you, I believe, have heard many messages about this. And uh, I can still remember that Pastor Joel shared this message before. Now, this psalm is a fitting uh, climax of the collection of what we call royal psalms. Now, we can uh, read that in uh, the ver uh, in uh, uh, Psalms 93 until uh, 95 to 100. And all of this sums up, when I say uh, royal psalms, it deals with the king as God's anointed or chosen one. But actually, many are prayers for the wisdom of the king and also his long life success in battle but if we're going to thoroughly read these uh, verses it is a prophetic in nature that they point to the ideal future of king and that is the messiah or the king of kings now it says here that it it sums up the emphasis in God's uh, sovereign rule. Not only his sovereign rule, but also his goodness to his people, and also his responsibility to the nation of Israel. And uh, through this, it is also uh, uh, when we say uh, uh, royal sums, it is the, uh, it deals with the importance of uh, uh, how the people of God must exalt and worship God in their lives. Now, let us take a look in uh, Psalms uh, 95 verses number 1 and 2 and uh, verses 6 and 7. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Verse 6, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God. Amen. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice. Now we have to understand here that we are also admonished in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 to be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, and also the evidence of this, what we call full, uh, fullness that we are joyful. Uh, Ephesians 5, 9, 18 and 19. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart 
to the Lord. Joyful, amen? And not only that, also in verse 20, it says here, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in, this, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only uh, to be joyful, but also to be thankful, amen? To be thankful for all of these uh, things that is happening around us, whether it is for our favor or whether it is not uh, in our favor. Let us be thankful to the Lord, whether it is good or whether it is bad. Everything must be, uh, everyone must be thankful to the Lord. Amen? Not only that, to be submissive as well. And that is why here in Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse number 16 to 25, we're not going to go there, but we are instructed, as what I've said a while ago, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and also to be filled with the Word of God. That must be our lives. And when we are, that's the time that we will be joyful unto the Lord. And be thankful and be submissive. Now allow me to preach the message tonight entitled, Believer's Heart. Now point number one here, in verses number one and two, the Bible tells us, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Number one, believer's heart. A believer's heart must be what? A joyful heart. He must have or she must have a joyful heart. Yes, we can easily understand the people of Israel during this time shouting hallelujah, praising the Lord, uh, joyfully uh, expressing themselves unto the Lord. They're joyful in praising the great and the powerful God. But again, if we continue to analyze this uh, text here, uh, the psalmist here uh, calls for all the nation of the earth to praise him. I am talking by, uh, particularly on the believers. We have to understand that as a believer, we must have a joyful heart. We must be joyful. Not only the people of Israel during this time, because they were introducing the God that they are serving as well to the Gentiles. The true and the living God. Knowing that we have a powerful God, knowing that the God that we're serving is, is alive, knowing that He can do everything for us, we must be joyful. Amen? Even in the midst of these difficulties, even in the midst of this hardship that we are experiencing right now, you might be uh, uh, down right now, but again, knowing that we have a God, knowing that we are saved, we must be joyful to the Lord. Yes. We have to understand that the church also has been commissioned to take the good news into all the world. Let us take a look in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18 to 20. Everybody knows this verse, amen? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Let's pray for our missions conference. Amen. Let's pray that the church here will continue to be alright for the lost in this place. Now, we have to understand, I want to say, go ye. The authority that uh, that was given to the church, the authority that sends us, the authority that guides us, and also the authority, the authority here that empowers us. The Bible tells us to make disciples, to make students, to make learners. It says here that we have to uh, share the gospel, to spread the gospel, to propagate the gospel to all the nations. Meaning to say to take the gospel to all nations. We have to understand that there is no place on earth where the gospel of Jesus Christ should not be preached. And we're disciples teaching them to observe. Okay? Disciples should not be made. We have to make disciples. Amen? Let's pray for Brother Punlu. 
and the other Cambodian brethren to continue to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Teaching them to observe, to present the whole counsel of God to those who made disciples. That's why Jesus said, I am with you always. It means that His presence means protection. Why? Because we are never out of His sight or supervision. His presence means power because we are what? We are uh, because as we fulfill His great command, we work in His name. Amen? That's why we need to be joyful unto the Lord. Another thing here, in uh, Mark 16, 15, same verse, And He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. So this command wasn't obeyed immediately. If you're going to read in the book of Acts for many years. What happened here was that the disciples uh, stayed in Jerusalem and it was only until the church was persecuted that it began to spread out to the world. But it did spread and continued. Amen. That's what we're doing in this country. That's what we are doing in this place. That's why we need to be joyful. Again. And it will be a glorious day when God's people gather. Later on. At His throne. For He is the only one true God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. The Bible tells us. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve Him and shalt swear by His name. So when we do this, the idea is a not of what we call shrinking from fear or uh, fear from an angry God. But again, instead, the idea is what? When you say fear is made in what? The concept of an all-filled respect to the loving God who has done so much for us. We need to fear God in our lives. Not only that, also in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible tells us, And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. That's why God requires us a what? reverential honor unto Him. The Bible tells us to walk in all His ways. God requires us to live our lives after the pattern He has set for us. To walk on His way, not and not on our own. We need to be joyful. Not only that, to walk in all His ways, but also, and what? To love Him. God requires us all. God wants us to love Him as well. This means that the love He expects isn't a love that just happens, but it is a love that comes from a decision to set our affection upon Him. To love Him. Remember that God loves us first. God loves us. Kahit matigas sa ulo mo, minahal ka ng Diyos. You need to be joyful unto Him. Another one, and to serve the Lord. Amen? God requires us to serve Him and to do everything for Him. That's why our service unto the Lord must be true. It must be real. It must not be a eye service. An eye service. Our service must be real and true. Our worship must be real and true. So how, how can we do, how, how can we uh, exalt uh, the Lord in our lives? But again, we, continue, we have to continue to read the Word of God. We need to be, to be faithful in our, uh, uh, our service, our uh, effort in uh, uh, exalting God in our lives. Always come to church and be on time. Amen. 
Bakit sa trabaho natin, nag-aaga natin? But here in the church, we cannot do. It's really sad. Amen? I don't know, some of you, if you get mad at me, but that's the reality most of the time. We're not really careful of what we're doing to the Lord. As if nothing is happening. Another one. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That's why we have to keep His commandment. God requires us not to only know His word, but to keep it. Amen? To keep it. In the sense of possessing it in ourselves and in the sense of protecting it. That's why you need to be joyful unto the Lord. Why? The Bible tells us, with all thy soul and with all thy heart. Now, not only that, but this is also for our own good. Amen? Do you believe in that? That's why every command of God is given for our good. Amen? Every command He makes is with our best interest in mind. Even if we can't sense it or understand it. That's why there are plans of God that we, uh, there are plans that uh, God is uh, just revealing unto us that we really cannot understand. But again, all of these plans are for our own good. Be joyful. Amen. Being here in the church, listening to the word of God, listening to the message of God, is already, is already a joy. It should be. Hebrews 13, 15. That's why worship leads to service and to worship. True service is in worship. That's why if we sing the Spirit and with understanding, our souls are received in heaven as the sacrifices to the Lord. Hebrews 13, 15, please. Thank you. Anakanina papala. Sorry. <laughs> By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's why we have to praise him. Right? But praise that pleases God is offered by Jesus Christ. On the ground of his righteousness and pleasing God. That's why you have to praise, to praise him in our lives. Amen? It should be the praise that pleases God. Also, it is a sacrifice of praise in that it may be costly or inconvenient. That should be our sacrifice. But again, I hope that we must have a joyful heart deep within. Yes, what we are experiencing right now isn't easy. But again, the only thing that we have to do is to give everything into the hands of God and trust Him. Point number two. We're not going to stay long. Masama ng tingin sa akin ng iba. Okay, joke lang. Testing. Point uh, number three. Point number two, I mean. Verse three. Know ye that the Lord He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. So, here, know ye that the Lord he is God. Okay? The verb here, know, means to know by experience. It, is also, it also carries the meaning of, of what we call acknowledge, that what we have experienced in our hearts we openly confess to others and bear witness of our glorious God. Now, let us uh, take a look in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39. Uh, this is a very familiar uh, story that happened here. And I believe everybody knows this. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39. The Bible tells us, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God, the God, the Lord, 
He is the God. You know, at this moment, the people were completely persuaded when they saw what the Lord had done. But again, also asked to choose, they were also asked to choose between Baal and God. But when they saw the power of God here, they don't have any choice, but obviously to the Lord. But tragically here, this was only momentary persuasion. This was no lasting revival in Israel. The people were decidedly persuaded, but not lastingly changed. That's what happened. What's your point number two, Brother Wilson? A believer's heart. Point number two, you must be submissive. Submissive. Amen. This praise made us, it means that much more than, why? Because he created us. For he also created the nations that we do not know him. It means that Jehovah, what? Constituted us as a nation, his chosen people. Oh, we've already read uh, Psalm 95 uh, verses 6 and 7. Let, let's go to Psalms 149 verse 2, please. Psalms 49 verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. 149 verse 2. That's correct. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Now, Isaiah 43 verse 1. But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and thou art mine. That's why here in verse 1, God speaks to his people as their what? Creator. God has a special uh, and a, a unique claim upon us. Why? Because we are, because what? He is our what? Creator. Are you thankful for that? So when men forget or reject God as creator, they also fail in the most basic obligation they have to God. Again, it's so sad that most of the time we are making our own ways. Instead of following the ways of God. We are not submissive to Him. And we tend to do such things that is in that is contrary to the word of God. And God isn't pleased in that. Another thing, we have to all understand as well, that the image of God's people as a flock of sheep is frequently found in scriptures. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. The Bible tells us, if not, uh, here, for we were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Oh, right. what? Uh, we have to understand that if not for Jesus, patience and endurance under the persecution of the ungodly, we would still be, what, going astray right now. But because of his work for us, we have returned to our shepherd, our pastor, and the overseer, which is the bishop of our soul. That's why here, this verse is, very, uh, this is a very simple uh, statement in faith. We have to understand that Jehovah is God. He is our creator. He is our Redeemer. He is our Shepherd. And we have to be submitted. We are to submit ourselves to Him. Amen? Because if the sheep do not submit to their Shepherd, then they will stray into danger. Now, I've explained to you that before when I shared to you uh, the message in the book of Psalms 23. Now, Many, many ships were lost. 
Ma many ships were, I mean, uh, uh, they've gone astray. Why? Because they're not following the shepherd. That's the essence and the importance of the word of God if we really try to understand. Hey. Submissive. Amen. Point number three. Lastly. Verses four and five. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. You know what? Uh, I'm not saying that I am very strong. Yeah. There are times that I'm also sad. There are times that uh, as if I, I don't know what I'm doing. It's, sometimes I, I think I, I'm losing hope. But again, every time I, I'm reading the Word of God, every morning, the Word of God is always giving me that joy in meditating His Word. Point number three. You must be thankful. Amen. Thankful to the Lord. You know what? The procession of worshippers has now reached here. Here in these verses, the gaze of here, the sanctuary, and they burst out with songs of praise. Why? Because of what? The Lord's goodness. Amen. Be thankful. The Lord's goodness because of the Lord's mercy or loving kindness and because of His faithfulness in our lives. Hindi ka kamahal-mahal eh. Pero minahal ka ng Diyos. Hindi ka matapat. Minsan pero napakatapat ng Diyos sa iyong buhay. Be thankful for that. Dumaan ang pandemic matindi hanggang ngayon. God is faithful to you. So be thankful. Be thankful to Him. Psalms 106 verse 1. Psalms 106 verse 1, please. Praise ye the Lord. All give thanks unto the Lord. For He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Amen. The mercy of God. Psalms 37 verse 8. I love this. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Not only that, in Psalms 85 verse 12, Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Be thankful to the Lord. Amen. You know what? Every morning when, when you wake up, it's already a blessing from the Lord. Amen. Be thankful to Him. Yes, uh, our salary is enough. But still, when you give to the Lord with a cheerful heart, with a joyful heart, wow, what a blessing. Be thankful to the Lord for that. Be thankful to the church where you belong. Amen. That nourishes you with the word of God. Be thankful for that. Be thankful for those people around you. Be thankful for that. Be thankful for the ministry that God had entrusted to you. In all of these things, you must be thankful to Him. That's why a thankful uh, person, we may not see His smile, but we know that deep in His heart, He is thankful to the Lord. Again, before we end, 
That's why God's faithfulness here is always given to each and every one of us. It is the same word in Exodus chapter 17 verse 12. We know the story. Describe Moses' hands staying steady. And also in Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. Let's go there please. Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it for, uh, to him for righteous. I'm going to explain that anymore. Everybody knows it. Believe. Relied on. That's why from down throughout the ages, God is always faithful to each and every one of us. So be thankful to Him. Amen? Yes. This problem is only for a season. This is only for a season. It will not stay long. God is faithful. Amen? Believe God. That's why if we are controlled by the Holy Spirit of God and the Holy Word of God, we will reveal it in the way we worship God. Instead of meditating the world, we will be led by the Word and the Spirit to be joyful in the Lord. Submissive to the Lord and thankful to the Lord. And the world will see the difference. Amen. And finally here, know that the spirit of thanksgiving helps us overcome some of those uh, things that uh, we cannot overcome. We can invade something that a spirit of unthankfulness, complaining, idolatry, pride, and again, I'll repeat, ingratitude. If we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. That's why, again, instead, be thankful for what you have right now. Whether it be big or small. Be thankful to Him. Again, As we end tonight, allow the Holy Spirit to work in your lives. And you will see the fruit later on. The heart that is joyful, the heart that is submissive, and the heart that is thankful. And I believe we can do it right with God. Pastor.